Hello everybody, welcome to Unit 3 Biology Area Study 1. Today we are going to be looking at the first component which is looking at plasma membranes. So in terms of looking at plasma membranes today, we are going to be looking at the structure of the plasma membrane um, and the movement of substances across it. Uh, we're going to be looking at the role of different organelles in the export of proteins. Um, so what's involved in eventually exporting a protein out of the cell through exocytosis and we're going to be looking at cellular engulfment of material uh, via endocytosis. So we'll start off we're just talking about what the plasma membrane is. So we know the plasma membrane also known as the cell membrane um, is found in both plant and animal cells and it is involving the movement of substances in and out of the cell. Okay so it has control over what comes in and what comes out. So in terms of the structure of the plasma membrane, there are two major components that we focus on. The first one is the phospholipid. So phospholipids are made up of our phosphate head and our lipid tail. And then the second component are our proteins. Now, there's a lot of proteins that are embedded inside the plasma membrane. Remember the plasma membrane, it's not a 2D shape, it's 3D. Um, but there are also some proteins that are attached to the surface of the plasma membrane as well. So just looking at, at the part where we're speaking about the phospholipid, all right, I wanna bring your attention over here. So over here, we've got what we call a phosphate head, okay? Um, and that phosphate head is what we call polar, okay? Polar, which also means that it is hydrophilic. It is water loving, okay? We've then got our lipid tail, and our lipid tail is what we call hydrophobic, okay, because it is water hating, all right? It does not like water. Um, we can also call this lipophilic, so it likes lipids. So they're the opposite um, of each other if we're talking about if they like lipids or if they like water. Um, the lipid tail is our nonpolar component, okay? So in terms of talking about polar and nonpolar, that's talking about our charges and how they work. So Things that are nonpolar, so our tail, um, they require strong, they have strong bonds that require a lot of energy to be able to break them. So they are sharing charges equally. Whereas our polar head, it's going to have one atom that has a stronger pull. All right. So in terms of talking about polarity, one end is going to be positive and the other end is going to be negative. In terms of looking at the function of the plasma membrane, we said that it forms a boundary around our cell and the extracellular environment. It also, the main focus is regulating the movement of substances in and out of the cell. All right, so in terms of looking at our phospholipid bilayer overall, basically what it is, is it's got a phosphate head, our lipid tail, joining to another lipid tail, and another phosphate head. So one part of it, okay, if we're just looking at this component, is called the phospholipid, where it has one phosphate head and one lipid tail. But when we combine them, okay, we say that it is a bilayer. It is a semi-permeable membrane that is a bilayer. So there are two layers of those phospholipids that are moving around. All right. The other parts that I also want to bring your attention to are these things that are inside of our phospholipid bilayer, okay, so inside of our plasma membrane. We have uh, protein channels, we have cholesterol that also sits between the lipids, we have glycoproteins, which are basically proteins that have carbohydrates attached to them, and they're used um, in immunity when we talk about that as antigen marker recognition sites. We also have carbohydrate chains okay we also have what we call integral proteins so now that we've kind of gone over the main structure of the plasma membrane we're going to go over now how substances are, are moving um, in and out of the plasma membrane so in terms of movement of substance across the membrane we have four different ways that we focus on in year 12 biology all right, so simple diffusion is basically the movement of molecules from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. All right, and 
moving from a high to a low concentration we call following the concentration gradient. In terms of if we have this green as being our plasma membrane, our molecules, our purple molecules, there's a higher concentration on the left compared to the right. So those purple molecules, say they could be oxygen, are going to be wanting to move from this left-hand side to this right-hand side to create a sort of equilibrium. Um, another example of a molecule that travels straight through the plasma membrane is also carbon dioxide. All right, looking at facilitated diffusion, the word facilitated means helping. Okay, so in terms of facilitated diffusion, we need some sort of protein channel to help or to facilitate the movement of molecules in, um, through the plasma membrane. So molecules still move across the concentration gradient, so they're still moving from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration, but they're for a lot of molecules that are a little bit larger. Okay, So they need a protein channel which they are going to travel through. Now I'm going to highlight that both simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion do not require energy for these processes to occur. Okay, so the major difference between simple and facilitated is that simple, um, the molecules are just able to pass directly through the plasma membrane, whereas facilitated diffusion, they require those protein channels. All right, osmosis. We know that osmo means water. So osmosis is the movement of water across our membrane. Um, now, water is moving from, again, a region of high concentration to low concentration, but we are talking about the solute, okay? Um, so when we're talking about this, we are saying that it's the movement of water from a solution of less solute concentration to greater solute concentration or from a high water concentration to a low water concentration. So in talking about osmosis, you need to be specific in your definition. If you are talking about the movement of solute, we're going from a less solute concentration to a more solute concentration. But if we're talking about the movement of the water, we're talking about the movement of water from a high water region to a low water concentration region. All right, our final um, way that we can move molecules across the plasma membrane is active transport. Now, active transport, I like to think of the opposite as the other three, in that we are now moving substances from a region of low concentration to high concentration. So we're moving opposite the concentration gradient. Um, because we're moving against the concentration gradient, this process, active transport, is going to require ATP. It's going to require energy. So an example um, of molecules that travel via active transport are ions. So that could be our sodium ions. It could be potassium ions. They need a carrier protein to go through, and they require energy. All right, so now moving on to our next component, we are talking about the role of organelles in exporting um, things out of the cell, exporting our proteins outside of the cell. So there are a few organelles, remember organelles are the things that are found inside of a cell that are involved in this process. So we have ribosomes. Now ribosomes are where these proteins are being made. It's the uh, region where translation is occurring, and we're going to talk about that in um, one of the following videos. But basically, proteins we know are made at ribosomes. The endoplasmic reticulum is basically an interconnected system of channels, okay, and there are ribosomes attached to the rough ER, um, and it is basically involving the transport of the proteins to different sites of the cell. So you can see here, around the cell, inside of the cell, there are these channels that uh, ribosomes are attached to. So that is helping us move our proteins around the cell. We then have our Golgi apparatus, also known as our Golgi body, which is the main um, region where packaging of our protein is occurring. So it's getting things ready for export out of the cell. All right, we then have our vesicles. So the proteins, once they've been sort of packaged and modified, they are then 
placed into vesicles, okay, um, from the Golgi complex ready to be exported. So they travel through the cytosol and they are going to fuse or connect with the plasma membrane. So if we think of this part here being inside the cell, we want to transport outside of the cell. So the vesicle fuses and then we are able to expel the contents, so the proteins that were inside the vesicle into the extracellular fluid. So they have now been exported out of the cell. All right, so these are the main organelles that you need to be aware of in terms of what their function is. So the opposite of exocytosis, which we just spoke about, is endocytosis. So exo is exiting out of the cell, endo is entering the cell. So there are two types of endocytosis that we need to be aware of, and they are phagocytosis and pinocytosis. So phagocytosis, we are talking about engulfing solid food particles, okay? So we're talking about larger substances, engulfing of larger substances. Whereas pinocytosis, we're looking at materials that are in a solution, okay? Um, so taking in fluids and solutes. Both of these processes are energy requiring. So they both need ATP to be able to occur. So if we just have a look at this diagram here, this just shows you the engulfment. Say so we've got an amoeba that wants to swallow up a food particle. Um, basically, we have entrapment, we have engulfment, we have digestion, and of course, absorption. So in terms of the diagram, you can see here that this is the opposite of the exocytosis diagram that we had. So if this is outside of the cell, our molecules are outside, we want to bring them inside. So they are now going to be brought inside. So we have particles that are outside, a vesicle is going to start to form inside the cell. All right, that is going to have our contents come in over here. Once our contents is inside, the vesicle is going to um, now be completely endocytosed. It's inside. And that's what we call our phagocytosic, phagocytosic, phagocytic um, vesicle over here. All right, this brings us to the end of looking at our first couple of dot points of the study design in terms of the plasma membrane. If you could leave a comment below with any questions, I'm happy to answer them in the comments. Guys, please give this video a thumbs up and hopefully that helped you. Bye.